I like that. I like that a lot. You look smarter this way? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Someday we'll have sunshine and heat. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Mally man, tally me banana. Daylight come, do you want to go home? <laughs> what is going on, Captain? I don't know, Randy. I want to go to the Bahamas. I want to go to the islands. What were you listening to? That was uh, Harry Belafonte singing Deo, or the banana boat song. Look at this. Oh, I get it now. Look at this. Do you believe this? <laughs> what? You Come ask for Calypso and Come someone delivers. We got a Calypso. And even Sea Dog found it. Wow, what a gorgeous color. So what am I looking at here? I thought you'd never ask. This is a 1977 <clears throat> reborn Golf Star 50. Golf Star was started in 1970 by a man named Vince Lazara. Vince had been part of the uh, original Columbia Yachts group uh, and uh, they were all responsible for that gorgeous boat, the Columbia 50, that was, came out in 1965. But at some point, uh, Columbia and Vince decided they should go separate routes. In 1970, he started the Gulf Star Boat Company. He built very inexpensive hulls that were usually, that they looked more like a motorboat. In fact, he designed them to be both a trawler or a sailor. As a result, you had some pretty poor performing vessels. <laughs> and this went on for a number of years until um, Gulf Star really developed a pretty terrible reputation. And he started in 1970 to build these. And that's about the same time that the captain here started in boat brokerage up in the Chesapeake. About five years later, he said, enough of this. We've got to have, we've got to put together a product because people now, it's, it's changing. They're, 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 they don't want just sort of throwaway boats. They want uh, a really neat boat. So they developed and designed this Golf Star 50. She's a uh, just a, a shoal draft boat, no center board. What does she draw? Oh, uh, let me check with my board of directors. <laughs> she draws about five and a half feet. The amazing thing about this boat, she's 50 feet long. She has a, a water line. Remember, we love water lines. 39 feet eight inches. That's almost a 40 foot water line. So this boat is really going to truck. She comes with, you know, what we like. Two masts, right? Tall one and a short one. It's a catch rig. The uh, nice thing about the catch rig is the mizzen boom will go out to just to the tip of the transom, okay? That means if you want to put on a, uh, uh, a self-steering wind vane, those have a, a big, what they call a feather that stands up behind the boat. And oftentimes, mizzen on yawls or some catches will interfere with that. 13, almost 14 foot beam. So she's not as wide as some of the boats are today, but she's still nice and chubby. This boat is really interesting. They built 172 of these boats and they were, uh, they were destined mainly for the charter trade. We have a keel. All right. And we have a rudder with a, a nice big skeg on it. This has all been reinforced uh, with a gusset up inside the hull. Uh, and with uh, some additional glasswork along the top here of the skeg. And that was because historically there was some question about some of these being a little lightly built. And so he made certain that this thing is, is just as rugged as could be right now. He had this blasted recently and this is so this... He just did. He had this soda blasted. The whole bottom was soda blasted. He's really torn the whole boat apart. They stripped the entire interior out of the boat right to the bulkheads and then build it back from there over a period of three years. So um, this is another one of those wonderful restorations. But he's put, what I think he said, about 15,000 miles on this boat. No issues. So she's ready to go to sea. And he's taken it from Canada down to the Caribbean. Uh, and they've lived on it, scuba dived on it, just had a great time with the boat. This has a flex fold uh, propeller on it. He loves it, he says the boat backs beautifully uh, and it will drive this boat, um, certainly in flat water at seven and a half, eight knots maybe. Oh, cooking right along. They're cooking right along. And we have our old buddy here for the line cutter and she's sitting here with some very nice looking zincs. <laughs> Those uh, are about both. the freshest we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I think he put them on just before we walked in. I think so. That's how fresh that is. Uh, 
Yeah, the strut is also bolted to the bottom of the boat here. You can see the, the bolts here. The strut and the skeg were all bolt-ons. One thing down here, you'll see he's, he's, in, he's installed two separate bilge drains. That's for the sump itself right there. And the lower one is for any um, additional moisture that just might get down into the uh, uh, ballast cavity. Uh, it just has a way of getting in there. So he's, he's got a hole and a plug down there for both places. All your normal through-haul fittings. She's nicely cut away forward. We like this a lot. And she's pretty deep forward too. So this is going to give you, you know, a nice soft ride in a seaway. And it's, it's almost trip-like in terms of the curvature of the bow here. How it's been rounded. It's not the sharp knife edge of a CNC or something like that. So this is a nice soft ride cruising boat. It's designed to crack the sheets on. You're not going to race to windward again. This is not a, a windward uh, uh, hot shot, but it's a cruising boat designed purely for comfort. Oh, the rub strike. He managed to find that originally she had a wooden one. He took off the old wooden piece, put this on, and then also returned the stainless steel rub strip that was on the original teak piece uh, and screwed that right on. It's just a nice, nice finish, nicely done. And the whiteness of it actually goes hand in hand with the uh, white boot top. The color of this boat, this is, uh, this is the same color they use on Stars and Stripes, the American America's Cup race boat. You're really gonna like what we see up here, okay? All right, sounds good, let's Are do you it. Good? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, here you come, buddy. You always sneak up on us. <laughs> but fortunately, Sea Dog spotted you right away. Yeah. She's... Hey, do I look comfortable? You look very cozy. I want to tell you, I am really comfortable. I have a nice backrest here. And you know, we have a hard top uh, section here. And, and these are growing in popularity. And at first, for the old time sailors and things, where we used to just sit out in the cold and bundle up with foul weather gear and and, and warm hats and gloves, and we thought that was just fine. And it was back then, but now, uh, when you have a little, uh, little bit of a longer tooth, you think, this thing is pretty nice. It has uh, curtains, these will come off completely if you want total breeze coming through if you're down in the islands. But right now, we're sitting up in chilly Elliott, Maine, kind of wishing we had this thing completely enclosed, and it will completely enclose. So this becomes actually a, another living room on the boat. This is one and a half inch uh, aluminum uh, tubing, probably aircraft grade or something. It's, it's really st sturdy and it's all welded, uh, not just bolt together pieces. And so you can grab this anywhere you want to and you're not going to fall over or fall out of the boat or whatever. So this, it really lends an incredible safety margin to this boat. I like that. I like that a lot. It's all set up here so you can read his wind speed, direction, depth, speed. Engine controls are right there. And isn't it nice to see an engine control section that is all dry and uh, the, the glass and the plastic in it isn't all melted and, and fogged over. And it's in the line of, line of sight. Too. And it's in the line of sight too. And on the other side he has his radar screen and uh, I think that's radar and GPS uh, combined. but. Uh, it's all right there and still has great vision. This does not have uh, a tall spire. This one will go underneath every bridge all the way down the intercoastal waterway. So if you want to just go down in the early fall to Florida, crank this thing up, close it in, and uh, uh, have a really delightful trip down there. Behind me, we have the main sheet for the mainsail right here. And uh, it's come down to a lead that'll go right to this variant winch. And he's taken the old barrier winches and added the uh, winch mate, which is a self-tailing device that, that bolts onto the top of just a standard old winch. And it's a great saving in price over trying to find a self-tailing variant of that size. You're just down in your bunk and you got some crew up here who don't have as much muscle as you do, right? And you got a, a, like a nice drill with a right angle uh, drive on it. Uh, now, if I just had something like that around, oh, wait a minute, here's something right here. It just happens to be handy. <laughs> this little puppy right here and you get a bit for it that goes right in the chuck and you would put that right in here like so pull the trigger and just sit here and that'll take off and it'll drive your sail right in. But this whole boat's a little different. Let's take a look. I think we have, look at that, a oh. great big airspace for a magic room below but just an airspace for uh, some below decks and there's none on the other side. Oh, the, 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 the teak in the cockpit here is, is lovely. Let's go take a look around here. Over 
400 watts of uh, solar pickup, uh, which deals with about 75% of their needs when cruising. And here, look at this. They've cut a hole in the Dodger, so you can grab this guy right there, and I'm not falling over. And this thing does not move. This is rock solid. Old time sailors and so forth, uh, like myself, might see this and sort of think, oh, it sort of looks like a, a greenhouse or something. But the reality of it is, it does extend your cruising uh, time of the year. Uh, form follows function, right? Yep. So that's got a great form. I like it. I'll live with it all day long. Look how wide the spreaders are. Uh, they really give a good stability to the spar. And as a result, they take the shroud right out to the tow rail here. There are over 20 opening ports on this boat that will provide you with light and ventilation. It's kind of like uh, putting the top down on your convertible because one minute you're all closed in, the next minute you've got the whole world right in the front seat. Nice to raise. The wind scoops are, are not original, but they look great. And notice, notice the lifelines here. Look at the height on these things. You're going to have to make a real effort to fall overboard on these. That's about, I think that's almost 30 inches. And it's really extraordinary. Uh, there's a large mantis uh, anchor right in the bottom. He's rebuilt the ideal windlass um, capstan, if you will. Again, with a chain cat on it. And this is kind of like a bow pulpit up here, isn't it? I like it. Do you like that? I do. <laughs> you could stand up there all day. We, we could give you a seat up there, you know, <laughs> with your own cushion. That's what all I'm looking for. And you, it's coming. You'll see. With any kind of luck, the decks have all been repainted and used with a, uh, they've, they've done a, uh, a, a, a variety of, of grit into the Interlux product until they got just what they wanted. And there's just enough grit on there to hold on to you. And it's pretty too, the white against the, the, the sand color. That's just because it, re it reminds you of the hood, isn't it? Uh, very much so, <laughs> yep. Uh, big vang arrangement here for the main boom. That's pretty heavy tackle on there, six part tackle uh, with a, a very strong uh, gooseneck fitting here for it. You don't find this in a lot of, of uh, uh, midship cockpit boats because they've They've brought a king-size bed back all the way to the stern, practically, to give you as big a, a, a bedroom as they can. So this is really practical. And it's got a little vent built in here, too. There's two 20-pound uh, propane tanks. You might that, like a little gasket on that, if I... I'd, I'd, like a, I'd like a little more gasketing on that, I think. And these two pieces here are nothing more than uh, uh, little windlasses to bring up your dinghy on, the, on these two davits. And what are you going to put on this uh, barbecue grill? What are you going to grill up over here? Cheeseburgers. <laughs> cheeseburgers, cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. And a Pepsi, maybe. Oh, want to go below? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I'm way up here in the four peak. All right. And you know where that is. Just walk forward and I'll open the door so you can come in and see this nice little cabin I have up here. Uh, look at this for space. I've got a lot of nice space here. Not so little. Two nearly uh, squared off berths. Uh, a nice big hanging locker right here. And it's also got a cedar lining in there. Just a nice little touch. Uh, this is all new, part of the refit? Oh, this is new, yeah. Oh, this was part of the refit, yeah, exactly. Pretty amazing. These were all uh, plastic. This this facing right here was all, all teak uh, veneer. And the water would get in behind it and it would darken it and stain it. And you could see that anytime you were on a Gulf Star. You could come in and see these stains around here and you think, oh, that's okay, we can fix it. But it didn't fix very well. And that was glued to the shell of the, of the cabin trunk itself. Uh, so he's put in this new material, which is, uh, has the same face on the other side. And uh, he's, this has all been glued right to the cabin roof. And so it's wicked solid. I mean, that just feels like the rock of Gibraltar right there. A huge, huge, huge uh, hatch here forward that uh, you can escape out of if you need to, but also give you tons of light. Uh, these boats are noted, noted for having storage, just unbelievable amounts of storage on this boat. Every unbelievable. And, every nook and cranny. And we haven't even started to pick up you know, the, the, uh, the berth cushions, because there's lockers under each one of them. I'm just gonna step into the head for a minute. And, uh, oh, you are too. We've got another one of our twofers here. We love these twofers. That's simply a head that has access from one cabin and another cabin, so that you needn't interrupt the person in the forward cabin to use it. It's got a standard manual head. Uh, it has a shower uh, head coming here. And we have storage access to 
uh, bilge pumps, water pumps, hull, through hull fittings, everything. Uh, quite quite solid there. And a very nice mirror here too, by the way. It's a perfect. You love those. This is really wide and it's coming almost out to the back of my legs. It actually is almost touching the back of my knees, which gives you a lot of room. And they've put the uh, anti-slide lump here. So when the boat heals, you're not gonna, mm, you're not gonna slide off if you're sitting on this. This is very nice and very wide and very sleepable. It doesn't pull out, but this in itself is just big enough. On the other side, uh, we've got a full size uh, a galley table here that will take 10 people maybe. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's pretty sweet. Okay, Randy, we're in the galley now, and boy, are we in the galley. This is, uh, I don't know, six, I, I must have 12 feet of running feet of counter space. Two of the larger sinks that we've seen, these are all Corian and they're molded in, as you see, they're, they have no lifts. This is really nice because so many times on a boat, you're tidying up and uh, stuff gets stuck under a little metal rim here around the outside of the sink. And it's just impossible to keep it clean looking. This is just gonna wipe clean with a damp cloth. It'll be terrific. We have a freezer section in there, okay. Freezer. Oh, freezer. That's, so that's just a freezer chest, that's really nice. Going a little oh, further aft. If you notice, I just bumped my head. <laughs> I forgot about that. This is part of the ergonomic test. There is a little ergonomic issue here. And it just means that it's not bad once you get used to it because if you're working at the galley, you never stand at attention, you know, like a soldier. You kind of stand here making sandwiches and doing things. So it's not a problem. And you can move forward and aft that way. Um, and if the boat's healing, you know, it won't be so bad either. This would not uh, diffuse any sort of interest in this boat in my book. Now we have another, this must be where they keep the pots and pans. Oh, no, uh, it's just a really enormous, enormous freezer section, freezer and icebox section that actually extends all the way up into here. Wow. Now remember these boats were originally designed for the charter trade, so they had to be able to pack as much food away as they could. They're not gonna have little tiny, you know, igloo boxes. And, you know, food storage as always, and, um, more food storage. Just everything's convenient, right to the cook. It's pretty terrific. Pretty great. Pretty terrific. Would you like to see the uh, navigation station? Oh, sure we've got would. something really special on this side of the boat. All right. Okay, now let's go back and just review for a second. You had a choice when you bought a boat new. You could get a third cabin behind me, or you could have a big workshop engine room addition. So, I think it's probably 50-50, but recently people that have been looking for these boats have been looking for that third cabin. What he did here is really, really clever. He wanted a big desk, and he thought, what can we do with the, the cabin space? So what he did is follow me on in here. This is the neatest thing. I love this. Love this. Oh, yeah. Oh, is this a great space? This is like a VIP lounge. It is a VIP lounge, and you just want to spend your whole day lounging back here. If you're sailing, it's a great spot to be uh, uh, if for the motion of the boat. You're just about, not quite midships, but not far from it. And this cushion will go on that board and give you a double, queen size double down here. Now, it doesn't have much privacy, does it? Captain Q would buy this boat and he'd immediately put a curtain rod arrangement and with a curtain across the face of this little roomette because uh, that would give you all the visual privacy that you need. I love it. I think this is really, this is a selling point on this boat. If somebody wanted to buy this boat. The scale of it's really cozy. It's very cozy. It's extremely cozy. And uh, the only thing it misses is a fireplace, but we can rig that up eventually. <laughs> One thing I noticed is that you have a step down there on starboard side, and there's, there's not a step down on the port. Right. I don't know why they didn't do that. That's a good point, and why they couldn't have accomplished that. Let's uh, pull this out. I think I can pop this up. Yep, there we go. That's pretty easy, huh? This will dazzle your eyes. I hope I left the light on here. Let's see. You just have to get that open. Oh my. Look, yes. Is that an oh my or what? Wow. Look who's here. Peekaboo engine guy. Peekaboo engine guy, right? <laughs> uh, this is the original engine. And look how, look how clean and simple this engine room is. Somehow these things always end up with, I don't know, 8 million electrical wires hanging from the overhead. Uh, oh, I'm, a, taking, I'm taking notes on this one. This is, this, is, this is really primo. Lots of light. Everything's here. And look what's right here. Here's the stuffing box right here. I can touch it. 
on my knees from the galley. You can stuff it from there. I can stuff it from there. <laughs> oh, this is, this is really wonderful. So you can sit down here and watch the whole engine go. Super tidy. Yep, very tidy, very clean. And what do we see here, by the way, while we're looking? Oh, you got a couple of bungs. What are these for? Plug up your uh, through hole in case you have an emergency leak. Right, if this thing breaks or these start to leak, you take one of these and you get a hammer and just drive it, drive it right in there, okay? And it will keep you from sinking. Oh, come in! Oh! Oh, yeah. This is the... Wow! This is pretty nice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look, I'm not even close to either side. This thing must be eight feet across here. And we also have... Oh, we have our own little head here, right? Uh, all new Corian counters. Look at the size of that sink. Uh, there's not a long-haired person in your life that wouldn't like to <laughs> wash his, her hair there <laughs> in that sink. And it has a separate shower stall. Is that neat or what? And he's got a little dispenser up there. It's going to have bottles flying around and a nice little teak grate down on the floor to keep your footing. So, and look at the size of that mirror. They like big mirrors in these heads. And that's really good because you want to make certain that your braces are on straight, right? Yep. Uh, very important. Red and green. Red and green. You could actually sleep right along this way on each side, have port and starboard berths. I kind of want to see how you fit on all the bunks. Don't I you? can arrange that. Okay. Let's see it. Here we go. When somebody sees this boat, they're going to go home and say, Honey, uh, let's sell the camp. Let's sell the condo. We beat the, uh, we beat the real rain today. Really incredible boat. I'm I celebrating Calypso, the Gulf Star 50 we just looked at. It's a really cool boat, and it really gets you in the mood. The boat's white, clean, Corian countertops. It's a great boat. And it's got a special little sort of VIP lounge to it. I think when you've seen other golf stars and you see this one, you are going to really appreciate what's been done on this boat. And it took three years for the owner to do it to bring it up to the stage. And she has cruised from Maine to the, to the islands. Uh, it's a blue water boat. Well, Rande, you know what I think as far as the rating on this boat is concerned? Number one, if it floats, it, it gets, gets a, a 10, 10, right? All right. Do you agree with that? I do. Oh, I knew you would. And they've become a standard for good offshore family cruising boats. Um, so I'm going to give it another 10 for involvement. So we're up to 20. But what the man's done to the boat, I got I to gotta say, it's a... I'm going another four. It's, he's, he's ramped it right up. This boat's ready to take off tomorrow. Bring your gear, sleeping bags, sheets, whatever, uh, and really enjoy it. This is a boat the whole family will enjoy. I want you to get in the mood with me today, okay? So I think we should do a little... Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Come on, let's go. Ready? All right. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. So we're having too good a time doing these things, so uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool, previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>